this here, all the stuff I've been through, and you're scared of a little chemotherapy? You're not real FBI, are you? I'm still in training at the academy. Jack Crawford sent a trainee to me. Yes, I'm a student. I'm here to learn from you. Maybe you can decide for yourself whether or not I'm qualified enough to do that. Mm -hmm. I'm not a concept, Joel. I'm just a f***ed up girl who's looking for my own peace of mind. I'm not perfect. I can't see anything that I don't like about you. But you right will. Right now, I can't. But you will. You know, you will think of things. And I'll get bored with you and feel trapped because that's what happens with me. Over the years, disabilities and disorders in film and media have had quite a bit of controversy. Specifically, how the characters with these challenges and issues are portrayed. The first time I saw certain films with disabled and disordered characters, I thoroughly enjoyed them. But on the second and third viewings, a few issues stood out to me and became more apparent on subsequent rewatches. Here are some things I want to address in this video. How we think characters are portrayed currently and how they actually are portrayed. Let's make a few stereotypical categories to map out where we're going using three characters with disabilities and three characters with disorders. Lieutenant Dan from Forrest Gump, John Nash from A Beautiful Mind, Matt Murdock, AKA Daredevil, Prince Albert from The King's Speech, Tyrion Lannister from Game of Thrones, and Hannibal Lecter from Silence of the Lambs. Lieutenant Dan is crippled during combat and becomes bitter because of his disability. This is a very common trope among crippled characters, oftentimes turning into villains. John Nash is a brilliant mathematician who suffers from schizophrenia. He is often judged by those around him or is considered harmful to others when his disorder runs rampant. Hello, I need Dr. Rosen's office, please. You gotta stop her, John. You leave her out of this. Who are you talking to? It's not her fault. John. She'll compromise us again. No, she won't. You'll go back to the hospital. John, answer me! In a few other scenes, John is denied certain privileges because he is different from the rest of his peers. Like most superhero origin stories, Daredevil's accident causes him to become stronger. His blindness and enhanced senses magically makes him stronger, proving that the blind are capable of so much in life. The King's Speech does an excellent job of showing processes of therapy. Jack and Jill. Jack and Jill. Went up the hill. Went up the hill. I just swear. Perfect. And provides a realistic view of how a disability can affect someone's life. As much as Prince Albert's stutter inhibits him from having total confidence in delivering speeches and taking the position on the throne, he doesn't let it affect his own independence. He still has a wife and family, and even has a social life outside of his work. Throughout the many stories of Game of Thrones, Tyrion Lannister struggles to overcome his abnormality and often struggles to fit in and be enough for his father. His character has learned throughout his life to deflect negative comments using his wit and experience, and oftentimes his wealth, to get ahead in life. Ever since the film Silence of the Lambs was released, psychosis has been a form of scapegoat used in many later films to terrorize others. Hannibal Lecter is portrayed as a terrifying man not to be underestimated with his cold and calculating demeanor. This film is phenomenal in so many ways, but we never get a chance to see the social issues that people with this disorder suffer through. We never get to see how he became the way he is, or how his relationships have been in the past. We only know that he is a terrifying man who has cannibalistic inclinations. There is a big problem with bad character portrayals with disabilities and disorders that can easily make a mass amount of others think this is how people with this mental illness are supposed to act and therefore do act or this is how we are or are not supposed to treat them or even worse that was so outlandish how could it be a real thing there are two recent movies i'd like to take on as case studies finding dory and split Finding Dory stars Ellen DeGeneres who plays a fish who suffers from a short-term memory loss disorder. This film was instantly praised for the representation and portrayal of the character Dory 
and for its accuracy and value to audiences around the world. In the film, Dory herself is praised for her independence. Many parents yearn for their children to see respectable and realistic portrayals on the silver screen. And with Finding Dory, they can. I suffer from short-term memory loss. Yes! That's exactly what you say. Split, directed by M. Night Shyamalan, stars James McAvoy, who plays a character that suffers from the mental disorder Dissociative Identity Disorder, or DID. In the movie, his character loses control over his own personality, and his other personalities decide to kidnap three teenage girls required for a ritual to awaken the final personality. For the most part, this film is a great example of a very excellent portrayal and insight into the science behind someone who suffers from this rare disorder. To whom am I speaking with now? Dr. Fletcher, it's Barry. It doesn't seem like Barry. Barry is an extroverted leader. Yes, I am. The issue here is that the film is advertised as a science fiction horror flick and has polarized audiences because of its bold choices, which have created a myriad of stigmas around this disorder already. While actor James McAvoy may have given one of his greatest performances, playing nine different personalities on screen, the way it came across to audiences worldwide greatly infuriated and horrified those who watched it. What do you think should be done to ensure these certain portrayals are performed correctly? Does it start with the acting process, or is it a marketing issue? Either way, I believe that this is a touchy subject that requires more care than it has received thus far.